Good morning, students. Welcome to our lesson for today. In this lesson, we will find and list systematically all possible outcomes for single events and for two successive events. The keywords that we are going to use, mutually exclusive, independent events, dependent events. You should know the differences of this. Mutually exclusive means they cannot happen at the same time. Independent events means they do not affect each other. And dependent events means the outcome depends on the outcome of the first event. There are several ways to show outcomes of an event. One is by simple listing. If we have very few outcomes, like flipping a coin, coin only has two sides, giving us only two outcomes. If you have two coins, that will give us two times two or four outcomes, so we can list them like what is shown on this box. Another way is by a two-way table. For example, if we have two dice thrown at the same time, one die has six outcomes and the other die has six outcomes. So a combination of the two will give us 6 times 6, which is 36 outcomes. That is not easy to list. It will be a long list. So it's easier to show the outcomes using a table. So one side of the table will show the outcomes of the first dice, and the other side will show the outcomes of the second dice. And for example, in the first cell, if dice 1 get 1, and in dice 2, you, write, you roll a 1, then you have the outcome 1-1. One, one. Let's take a look at this example, wherein we will use a two-way table to show all the outcomes. Hassan has four blue pens and a red pen in his pocket. He takes out one without looking, and then he takes another. Complete the table to show all possible selections. So in here, there are two events. He draws one pen and then he draws another pen. So we will first write the possible outcomes of the first draw on the vertical side on the right of our table. So we will call the blue pens B1, B2, B3, B4, and the red pen as R. And then the second draw, we will put it on top of our table for the second pen. Again, they are the same pens to select from, and we name them B1, B2, B3, B4, and R for red. For the first pen, if he got the blue one or B1 in the first selection, he cannot get it again in the second selection because he did not put it back. So B1, B1 does not exist. So we put X on that cell. That means that outcome is not possible. Then, if he draws the first blue pen named B1, in the first selection and then draws B2 or the second blue pen, we name it B1, B2. Same if the first draw is a blue one and then the B3 pen, we have B1, B3. Or it could be that he was able to select the B1 pen and the B4 pen in the second, so that's B1, B4. Or he could have selected the B1 pen and the red pen, so we call it B1R. Or it's possible that in his first selection, he would be able to draw B2, the second blue pen, and in his second selection, he would draw the B1. So that is B2, B1. And then again, if he selected B2 in the first pen, he cannot select it in the second draw. 
So the outcome B2, B2 does not exist. He cannot select B2 again because he did not put back the pen. And the list will go on. B2, B3, B2, B4, B2, red. Or the first pen will be the B3 pen with the B1, B3 with B2, B3 then B3 does not exist. Then B3 and B4, B3 and the red. Or it could be the fourth blue pen named B4, then B1, B4 then B2, B4 then B3, B4 then B4 again cannot be. So there is no B4, B4, but we will have B4 red. Or it could be possible that the first pen that he selected is the red one. So you will have RB1, RB2, RB3, RB4, or both are red cannot be because there is only one red in, the, in his pocket. So if he selected the red in the first pen, he cannot select it in the second pen. So he cannot select both red pens. So I hope this table is clear. Now we have seen here, if you count all the possible outcomes, there will be 20. Now when we use this table to get the probability, the denominator will be 20. So first in here now, if you want the probability that both are blue, so we have count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So there are 12 possible possibilities that Hassan was selected where he was able to select both blue pens. So that's 12 out of 20 or 3 pens. What is the possibility that he first got a pen that is red? So in this one, it will be, it will be the RB1, RB2, RB3, or RB4. That's four possibilities out of 20 or one fifth. Now what is the possibility, probability, that one pen is red? So it doesn't matter if it is the first draw or the second draw. So we will now consider B1R, B2R, B3R, and B4R. Now that's a total of 8 out of 20 or 2 fifths. Another way of showing outcomes is using a tree diagram. We usually use this when we want to show outcomes of successive events. For example, I have a bag of counters, three blue and seven red. I pick one counter out without looking and put it back in the bag. I then pick out another counter. What is the probability that I picked out a red counter and a blue counter? Start with how many counters we have in the beginning. That's a total of ten counters, seven red and three blue. When we first draw, we have two colors, possible colors to get. So you have to draw two branches, one for red and one for blue. And then the probability of getting a red is 7 over 10, because there were 7 red out of 10 colors. Put that on the branch. And the probability of blue is 3 tenths, 3 blue out of the 10 colors, and put that on the branch. On the second draw, we still have the same number of counters because we put it back. We put the first counter back in the bag. So again, we have seven red and three blue. So in here, in the second draw again, the probability of red will still be seven over 10 and blue is still three over 10. Same when we first have a blue, now, still we still have 7 red and 3 blue because the first draw that is blue is put, it, is put back in the bag. So we still have 7 red and 3 blue. And then still the probability of red will still be 7 over 10 and probability of blue will be 3 over 10. Now, what's the probability 
to get a red in the first draw and then a red again in the second draw. What we do is just to multiply the probabilities on these branches. Red then red, that would be 7 over 10 times 7 over 10, which is 49 over 100. The probability that the first draw we get a red and then blue in the second, we multiply 7 over 10 times 3 over 10, which is 21 over 100. And the probability that the first draw was a blue and the second was a red, we multiply 3 tens times 7 tens, that's 21 over 100. And the probability that the first draw is blue and the second is again blue, we multiply 3 tens times 3 tens, that is 9 over 100. So now we can get the probability that one red and one blue, that would be 21 over 100 plus 21 over 100, that would give us 20, 42 over 100 or 21 over 50. So this is what we call independent events because the first draw and the second draw does not affect each other. The second draw, probabilities in the second draw is the same as the probabilities in the first draw. Let's see what happens if we don't put back the first counter that was drawn. So let's start with the 10 counters, 7 red and 3 blue. So the probability of getting a red on the first draw will be 7 over 10 and the probability of getting blue will be 3 over 10. Now in the second draw, if we get a red in the first draw, we will now have only 6 red in the second draw and 3 blues because the first red was not put back. So the probability in the second draw of getting a red will be 6 out of 9 and the probability of getting blue will be 3 out of 9 and 1 third. If we get a blue in the first draw, that means there will be 2 blue left and the 7 red for the second draw. So the probability of getting red in the second draw, given that blue in the first draw, will be 7 over 9. And getting blue will be 2 over 9. Now we want the probability of having one red and one blue. So it's either red first then blue or blue first then red. So what's the probability that first is red and second is blue? So we multiply 7 over 10 times 3 over 9. So that's 7 over 13. What is the probability that blue in the first draw and then red? So we will multiply 3 tenths times 7 over 9, which is 21 over 90 or 7 over 30. So to get the probability that we get a 1 red and 1 blue, we will add this two. So that will be 7 over 30 plus 7 over 30, which is 14 over 30 or 7 over 15. Now we don't need to get other probabilities, but we can find them. For example, to find red in the first draw and then red in the second draw, that would be 7 over 10 times 6 over 9, which is 42 over 90 or 14 over 30. To get a blue and then a blue, that would be 3 tenths plus 2 over 9, which is 6 over 90 or 2 over 30. Now notice that if you add all these probabilities, it will be equal to 1. Now this is called dependent events because the second draw depends on the first draw. The probabilities on the second draw is not equal to the probabilities on the first draw.